if you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your co- I'm, my, I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, <laughs> transformational shaman and spiritual coach. I'm here, as always, with my friend Joshua Radawan, spiritual coach specializing in paranormal investigators and investigations and helping people not get hurt by things that go bump in the night. So today we are going to talk about, do I have energetic BO and what is the importance of clearing my energy field? <laughs> so uh, first thing I'm going to say is I want, I want to talk about why I use that term, energetic BO. <laughs> I years ago I had a student and I was asking people do you know what an aura is and they were like oh ooh, ooh. <laughs> Tom Russell <laughs> Tom Russell said it's energetic BO <laughs> and it's the best thing I've ever heard to describe an aura <laughs> Because it totally is true <laughs> it's like it, it is your energetic emanation that 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 is the expression of you <laughs> or you know your pheromones in the case of your bio right so we're using it sort of tongue-in-cheek today obviously which we love to do with our titles thank you josh you're welcome and, uh, <laughs> so you know we're talking today about your energy field which is your aura right um and we're talking about why you need to clear it and what, how it gets gummed up and, you know, all the things. So let's, let's talk about how it gets gummed up because, you know, I've talked about a lot of things. I don't think I've talked about how your energetic field gets gummed up. So let's, let's have that conversation first. So if you walk into a space filled with ugh energy, right? So a place where somebody's just been arguing or where where people are downtrodden a lot. You know, like walk into the DMV, you'll feel what I mean. Right? It's just, <laughs> uh, right? Everyone's anticipating pain and misery, right? If you walk into any place like that, you can pick up that energy. And you can also pick up what I affectionately and technically re- uh, refer to as schmuggies. Right. And so schmuggies are things that feed on that kind of energy. And so it's one thing to pick up stuck energy like that. It's a totally different thing to pick up a schmuggy. A schmuggy, because it feeds on that energy, it will, if it attaches itself to you, it will encourage you to feel that way so that it can feed on it. Okay. And so you really don't want to get a schmuggy stuck to you that is attached to misery, right? There are pain eaters, there are misery eaters, there are, you know, all these different schmuggies out there. And so you don't want to get it, get one of those attached to you because now it's going to encourage you to feel that way all the time. Right. And so if you feel like you have been doing your best to eliminate that critical mind, that monkey mind that that's making you miserable and you're not getting anywhere and you've been really disciplined and you're like, I'm doing all the things and it's just not going, you may have a schmuggy. And so, you know, this is why clearing your energy field is super important, right? Now the average schmuggy will be cleared by doing some of the stuff we're going to talk about today. Other things are more insidious and need help. Okay. So, <clears throat> Um, you know, do it, try to do it yourself. And if it doesn't work, then ask for help. Right? So the, the other way that your energy field can get gummed up is if you are having a hard time, if you're just personally going through some shit, right? It's like, ah, yeah, ah, and now you're like trying to feel better, but all this nah, is stuck in your energy field. And so that's another way that it gets gummed up. Another way is just you, you got lazy in your work and you didn't do anything and you didn't have fun either because fun will clear your energy field, but you know, you didn't have fun and you didn't do your work and you just decided to go into your phone and sit for weeks on end. That'll gum up your field, you know, running into a resistance in your personal growth path that will also gum up your field. You know, there's a lot of different ways for things to happen. Um, trauma, trauma really gums it up. 
So there's a lot of ways that, that your energy field gets gummed up, just like there's a lot of ways that your body gets dirty, your clothes get dirty, your, your dishes get dirty, you know? Um, you just pick up dirt and your house gets dirty and you know, you got to clean it periodically. Well, this the energy field is the same way. You got to clean it periodically. And so, you know, don't take it as a failing that your energy field needs to be cleared. It's just, Oh yeah, it got dirty. Yeah. Shit happens. Right. So, it, you know, as you learn how to shield more effectively, as you learn how to hold your energy better, as you learn how to protect your home, you know, the need to clear your field will be less each time, but it still is not zero, right? <laughs> because, you know, we go places, we do things, we have experiences, we, we get lazy, you know, things happen, right? So the, when you're looking at clearing your energy field, there are a lot of different ways to do it. And I want to talk about, I want to talk about cultural appropriation for a minute, um, because you know, when I was coming up through this stuff, Sage was like the be all end all of things that you do. And that has evolved down and, you know, it's still there, but now people are saying Palo Santo. I'm going to ask you please not to buy Palo Santo because it is very difficult for the indigenous people who use it as their primary spiritual practice to get hold of it. It is being over harvested and therefore it is becoming uh, endangered. So I'm gonna please encourage you not to buy the Palo Santo. And now even sage is a cultural appropriation from Native American cultures. It is a natural plant and it is also being poorly harvested right now. So the it is not to the point of endangerment like Palo Santo is, but I would encourage you to very much research where you're buying your sage from to make sure that it is ethically and sustainably harvested if you're going to use it. Now, do you have to use these? No. The benefit of sage in particular is that the sage plant itself has been scientifically proven to reduce, to kill off 99% of viruses and pathogens and things like that, right? It's, it's literally safety you know, it's, it's literally clearing. The, the sage plant itself is literally clearing the air and making it clearer from undesirable elements, right? And so the when you're using it, you are actually getting the benefit of the plant in addition to the intention. But as we know, magic is intention. And a lot of people live in places where they can't have smoke, Although ironically, I've never had my white sage set off my smoke alarms <laughs> ever. I did. I, well, uh, and it's funny because I, I talk about this a lot. You know, you know, you say something. I was like, well, I'm going to say it's a shit out of this place. I've only had it happen once, you know, and I, <laughs> I was like, you know, it was, I, I think, you know, everybody in the house was sick and I was like, I don't want this shit, you know? So I was like, I'm really, really gonna, you know, sage everything, you know? And I, I breathe it in too, you know what I mean? I like, I really take it into my lungs and, and blow it out. But I, I really went heavy on it. You know, I lit it with the gas stove and I'm blowing on it. And, you know, just like, I just smoked it. I looked like a Snoop Dogg concert inside the house. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you do it that bad, you'll set off the smoke detectors, but I haven't ever set one off because I'm never that nut. But yes, and that's with it, I should say. So the uh, the so sage can be used, and uh, you know, but you also can can clear your space, clear yourself, clear you know whatever with rattles or tingshas, right? So you can do it with sound, with vibration. You can do it with a rattle, you know, which is another form of vibration. Basically, you're just breaking up the stuck energy, right? And clearing it, which you can do with yourself or you can do with your surrounding, your surroundings, right? So, you know, these are all ways that you can clear your energy field. Um, you can also do it with intention and just, you know, see your energy field being cleared and just cleaned away. You know, I had a friend of mine who, uh, she... <laughs> She was learning Reiki and she was terrible at remembering to clean up after herself. Just, just horrible. She just would forget every time she couldn't remember. And so we talked about it and I said, well, why don't you just ask for some helpers? 
and they just have have them come in and clean up for you. And she was like, I could do that. I'm like, why not? You know, <laughs> she's like, okay. And so she, it was so funny because she was, she, she was this like hyperactive person. You know, she was like this big around, you know, and, and, and like ate like a bird, but like ran like a million miles a minute. Right. Brilliant, brilliant cancer researcher. Right. And she, she manifested these little angels who would come in with mops and buckets and look like this. You know, they had the little, like, <laughs> they looked like fairies with the, fa with the fairy faces and making faces. And they just like frantically mop and, and clean every time she was working on someone. She, anything she dropped, they would just frantically mop and clean. It's hysterical to watch, right? But you could manifest something like that and have them come and, and help you clear either your house or you, right? There's, there's, there's an infinite number of ways to do any kind of magical working. Okay. You are only limited by your imagination. So you can set up something that is an automated system that just clears through your energy field. You can set it up to look like a, a scanner in Star Trek, right? <laughs> Where they scan the body. It's like, Ooh, and that scans and it's a bug zapper and boom, anything that doesn't belong, it zaps, right? You know, you, any way you want to imagine it is how you can make it work, right? That's the benefit of doing work at this, uh, you know, when you're doing it from an intentional base, you know, we uh, energy magic is nothing more than intent, right? And that is always the case. It's intent followed by an energetic flow, right? That's all it is. And so, you know, we, when we get started, we often put a lot of roadblocks in our way saying it has to be complicated. And it really does not have to be complicated. It is really very simple. It is all about focus and intent, focus and intent. That's it. What do you want? How do you, how do you put that energy to it? And then be consistent, cut the energy off. Don't be, don't be willy nilly about it. Right. Don't be wishy washy. Be like, okay, I'm done. Boom. Right. Close. And then let it go right? Because you've got to let it go or else you're going to just yank it back, yank it back, yank it back. And then nothing happens when you do that. So, yeah. All right. So any questions, Josh, or any thoughts? You know, I just want to expand on some of that a little bit. Cause I, I, you know, you're extremely good at sound healing, right? Like I listen to your sound healings, not just when I'm editing them, but I go back through them all the time. And I, I'll tell you, that is some of the most powerful stuff in, in so many ways. You know, even though you have a specific intention, which each one of them you do, I, I have found that that is a great way to clear my energy field in a, in a lot of ways too, because, you know, clearing that grief is that energy field. Clearing all of that is all, all that stuck stuff. So if, you know, I, I'm just trying to give you all some personal tips of, of what I use too. You know, like when I am really feeling in that stuck space and it maybe it doesn't feel like some of that other stuff is working because sometimes our own limiting belief structures get in the way of shit <laughs> you know go and do something like that you know go to a crystal sound healing you know get, get out and it's also about exploring all these things and finding out what really resonates with you you know it's it's it's, it's important but it, it's interesting because we had a a schmuggy of stuck energy in the house yesterday and i had forgotten about the rattle I had forgotten about the rattle. Um, we're starting to get ready for the big move, right? And, you know, as we're starting to tear things apart, we are starting to notice where some of this stuff has been bound up in the house for a while. So, you know, it was interesting because three people went in this room and they're like, I'm dying. <laughs> you know, like they're just, you know, like energetically not feeling great and, you know, real down. And uh, so it's, you know, spent some time working on that this morning, but I forgot to bring the rattle into it. So, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a good little, good tip there. Yeah. I, and it's very interesting to me that, that both you and Catherine are moving at the same time. So I'm hoping that that means that we'll be moving soon too. <laughs> 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 because, you know, the energies are aligning, right? So, but, uh, yeah, the, when you, so we're also in Mercury retrograde right now. So we're, we're recording this in mid August. And so we're in the middle of Mercury retrograde and the Mercury retrograde is particularly good for clearing out the, the stuck spaces, right? It's all about doing the process of 
you know, breaking up the stuck energies, clearing out the closets, you know, digging out and clearing out things that you don't need anymore and all of that, right? So that's, that's really uniquely suited to Mercury retrograde. You should also not be signing new contracts during Mercury retrograde because that's just been when communication is messed up, right? So there's, there's all sorts of things that you want to be like, hmm, with. I didn't and put so, that together. You know, it's funny because I'm redoing all the altars in my house as I'm getting ready for this move and what I'm trying to bring, you know, into, into form as well. I was like, yeah, there's a lot of old energy and all this. I'm like, you know, just, and, and clearing it, you know, clearing that energy field and just really, yeah. really re, you know, re-envisioning, you know, as uh, what it is I, I'm desiring moving forward because things are shifting, right? I think it's, it's it's interesting because it's all over the planet right now. I see it, you know. I, I have to say, you know, like we were talking a little bit about this before. And, you know, it's something I put together this last week. It's so interesting that the, the whole collective seems to be going through this heart activation, right? And the Olympics were held in France, right? And it's all of these things, right? And I'm like, man, what is really going on behind the scenes? With, with some of this stuff but you know it's 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 just an interesting time for sure um and I, I do feel a lot of that shifting and I didn't know Catherine was moving so that's interesting too yeah she's just moving up the mountain she's not moving far but you know she's moving so yeah it's it, so when you're looking at what's going on in your life you know when you're digging up stuff from the depths of your being that will cause you to need to clear your energy field, right? Because <laughs> all the crap is coming back up. If you're trying to clear out stuck energy that's been stuck in your field and you're doing that inner work, then that, that requires some clearing too, you know? It, lots of reasons why you want to clear your energy field. And so, you know, doing it on a regular basis is probably a good idea. And so, you know, how, how often is often? So once a week, probably a good idea, right? If you're going through deep stuff, maybe more often, right? Uh, once you've got really good shields and wards up, then you probably only need to do it every, you know, month or two. But, you know, when you don't have your shields up, when you don't have your wards up, when you don't know how to hold your energy field so that other people stay out of it, then, yeah, more often is better. So every time you feel ugh or off or uh, I don't know where I am, well, then that's time to, to smudge or you know, clear your energy field, right? So, okay, well... This was a short topic, but an important one. So we're going to call it good. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, please send them in. We're happy to answer them for you. And don't forget that what you focus on is what expands. And what you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Show